Uh, basically my training uh, it's basically been the same since day one it's very basic simple uh, just like everything else in my life I try to keep simplicity in there as much as possible so uh, right now I mean my schedule changes of course you know of course with guest appearance schedules and and if I have certain things to do appointments or whatnot so I basically train four days straight now um, I used to train three days on one day off I used to train two days on one day off but Right now, basically, I train four days in a row. Uh, day one would be uh, um, back and traps. Uh, day two would be quads and hamstrings. Day three would be shoulders and triceps. And day four would be uh, chest, um, abs. Basically, I train abs almost every day and calves usually once or twice a week. Um, and then, of course, uh, stretching every day for 20 minutes. So that's my routine. Basically, uh, my training is very uh, high intensity. My workouts are very quick, but with a lot of volume, a lot of sets, a lot of drop sets. Uh, drop sets meaning, um, for example, if I'm doing incline bench press for chest, I may uh, do a set with 315 pounds on the incline barbell, um, crank out eight or nine repetitions, basically to failure. Um, set the weights, uh, step up for about five seconds, get back on the bench, crank out two or three more. That's basically to my, my drop sets to failure. I don't drop the weight down. I do that kind of drop sets where, you know, I don't change the weight. So um, high intensity training, uh, high volume. Um, I, usually my repetition range falls between eight and 12 repetitions. Um, I, and um, I do basically about 15 to 20 sets per body part. So that means for biceps, I'll do, you know, 15 to 20 sets. For triceps, I'll do 15 to 20 sets. You know, chest, it's the same. Back, I may even do up to upwards to 25 sets. It depends on the day. You know, I basically go by instinct how I feel. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I train uh, usually in the morning, um, one session, and then they go back in the afternoon and train a second session. And then, of course, when I'm getting ready for contest prep, I basically do uh, you know two hours of cardio a day, uh, upwards to three hours sometimes. So I'll, you know I'll be in the gym four times a day. Basically, it's four different sessions. You know I'm upward up. I get up all all year round basically uh, by six seven o'clock in the morning, and I go to bed usually around ten or eleven at night. And basically my day revolves around the training schedule and just business in between phone calls and whatnot. So. Um, it's basically the same way I've been training for years and I think basically when you build a certain amount of muscle uh, it's easier to train that body part so um, I really don't have any lagging body parts that I have to take extra care uh, training so um, I like to train really high intensity shock training which basically is very quick repetition um, like I said almost sloppy training is what I like to call it, but it's sloppy in control. And I think that really helps um, stimulate the deep muscle fibers that way. And basically, uh, that's it with my training. Uh, my diet, uh, off season to uh, pre contest, it basically stays basically the same. Whereas um, I eat for carbohydrates, oatmeal and yams is my main carbohydrate sources. And then for proteins, I usually have egg whites, turkey. Um, lean beef and protein powders, uh, some chicken, and uh, basically I eat six times a day, whether it's off season or uh, um, pre contest. Except off season, I eat six times six food meals, and then um, add a shakes in between. So it's upwards of twelve um, portions, but of course half of those are probably protein shakes, and of course my calorie count goes way up, but uh, not drastically. I mean, I eat somewhere between uh, 5,000 and 6,000 calories off season. Whereas pre contest, I have a fluctuation. I have a high, low, medium schedule that I that I work with, where my my calories range from 3,000 to probably 4,500, uh, depending on what day. I like to usually go uh, low carbs for a couple days, then maybe jump up to a high carb day, um, where my carbs fluctuate anywhere from the low days, 50 carbs a day. 
uh, with very high amounts of protein, upwards to 600 grams of protein. And then on my medium days, maybe go up to 250 carbs uh, a day and keep my protein uh, somewhere around 450. And then on my high days, high carb days, I usually go up to uh, uh, five or 600 uh, carbohydrates and then drop my protein down to about 300. So where I add in the carbohydrates, I basically take out the protein. And that's basically what I do off season where I eat a lot more carbohydrates um, than protein. So in the off season, I eat about 300 grams of protein a day. Um, like I said, coming from uh, meat sources, mainly in egg whites, protein powders. And then basically uh, my carbohydrate range and it ranges from probably 600 to 1,000 carbohydrates. But it's basically pretty clean uh, food. The only things I like to have like after a workout is maybe some sugar, uh, carbohydrate drink. And of course I like to eat out. So of course we eat out, you know, a couple times a week. And I may splurge here and there. My favorite cheap foods, you know, are probably like uh, uh, sweets such as uh, candy and uh, um, some sort of like carrot cake or, or uh, cookies, sugar-free uh, frozen yogurt, fat-free frozen yogurt. And basically that's all I eat, but I stay on, a, uh, I still weigh my food off season. I still carry my food when I travel as much as I can. And, uh, and of course, pre-contests, I'm very, very strict where I weigh everything to, to a T. I have a certain time that I get up every day. I train at the same time. I eat at the same time. That's the only difference is I'm much more disciplined getting ready for a contest because you have to be on the clock all the time uh, because any changes you, you make, um, are, are crucial at that point and you can actually um, not screw up that way if everything's by the clock you can you can adjust your diet and if it's very simple where you're only eating a certain amount of foods and a and certain number of foods then it's great because when you do make adjustments it's that much easier too so uh, I basically prepare all my food earlier in the morning uh, but basically when I eat low carbs which is most of the time anyway it's basically just preparing a bunch of vegetables I keep in the fridge and then just cooking my meats meal by meal. I cook a lot of my meats on my George Foreman grill, which I use to cook my potatoes also, which I think is great. I travel with the George Foreman grill and I think most bodybuilders do, but, uh, and of course steam all my vegetables. And, uh, the only thing I really have to rip make is my egg whites in the morning, which my wife usually makes for me before I, she heads off to work because she gets up around five and, by the time I get back from the gym doing my cardio, my meal's ready here, so meal one's pretty easy. And then I just could basically prep my food through the rest of the day, for the rest of the day uh, after my training. I go do my cardio in the morning and come home, eat, go back to the gym and train, come home, uh, eat again, sleep, eat another meal, go back to the gym, train again, uh, come home, eat two more meals, and then go back to the gym for my last session of cardio and come home eat my last meal, which is basically protein. And then uh, I go to bed uh, and wake up and do it all over again the next day. So that's basically my routine for well, about 14 weeks before a contest, I start dieting. Um, but I get real serious about six weeks out where I, where I have to really start dialing it down. I'm basically ready by six weeks out, but just have a little more body fat maybe on my back and my glutes basically to take off so it takes the extra step whether it's uh, increasing intensity of the cardio and making adjustments in my diet to uh, to take that body fat off and, and of course uh, attain uh, the best condition that's possible for uh, all these contests because uh, that's the name of the game in the pros now is everyone's getting so conditioned you have to be exactly on the money so I think that's why it's important to weigh everything have everything exactly I write down everything I do even if I go to the store to get some eggs, uh, go to the tanning salon, which I do every day when I, when I get ready for a show, basically starting six weeks out, I, uh, I do everything exactly the way, uh, way I should. And uh, I write everything down. I have a journal, I have all my logs from all my contests so I can refer back to them even though you have to make changes and adjustments for every show, you still, uh, you still have to have everything there uh, written down so you can refer to that and say, okay, what did I do last time? It kind of gives you guidelines and uh, that you can follow for, for um, making adjustments in your diet and your training and the, your routines. So that's it, basically.
those 50 grams of carbs a day. Fill me up. She's kind of the the uh, backbone of my bodybuilding career. She's always supported me, and it's funny because on our first date, I told her I said uh, um, when I was uh, 16 years old, uh, I wanted to be a bodybuilder, and she didn't really even know what bodybuilding was. And honestly, I didn't know what it was either, but I knew I looked like the look of the magazines, and I hadn't even touched weights yet, so I didn't even start training until I was 18. But uh, so she supported me since day one. And uh, basically I'll start in the beginning. Uh, I'm 27 years old. I was born uh, August 3rd, 1973 in Worcester, Massachusetts, which uh, is about 50 miles west of Boston. Uh, I have three brothers, three sisters. I come from a pretty large family. My parents are still alive. They live all back on the East Coast. Um, also her family is there. All my brothers and sisters, they still live originally where I'm from, Sterling, Massachusetts. is is a town I'm originally from. It's a smaller town, but um, I basically worked in construction when I was a kid. My family had a concrete business, so I worked from age 11 to, to uh, 18 doing that. So I built a pretty good physique, and that's basically how I got involved in bodybuilding. I played football in high school and, of course, toyed around with the weights a little bit. I was always a strong kid. I remember going in when I was in high school and being able to bench 315 pounds the first time I ever went in there. So I was uh, the strongest guy in my, in my school, basically, and we had a pretty large high school of like 1,600 kids, I think, something like that. We both went to high school together. She played soccer, I played football. And uh, so basically I wanted to wait until I graduated high school to start lifting weights because I worked so much in my diet wasn't right and I, I started reading the books a little bit uh, through high school and then I basically joined the gym on my 18th birthday. Uh, I joined the Gold's Gym in Worcester. Began weight training, really didn't know what I did, was doing but just being in the gym all the time and eating a lot of food, I put on weight pretty quickly so I went from, I started about 175 pounds, I went up to about uh, uh, 220, 225, somewhere around there my first year of training and then um, decided to compete, um, did the team nationals actually, my first contest in, when I was 19, um, it was in North Carolina and I actually placed first there in the heavyweight, so I progressed pretty quickly, I was about 215 pounds for that contest, um, and I was fortunate, um, when I first started, you know, training, I didn't really know what I was doing, I asked a lot of questions and I actually got hooked up with Chris Aceto, who still works with me on nutrition. He writes a lot for Muscle and Fitness and Flex, and he's always advised me on my dieting and, and training. So he helped me for that team nationals and drastically improved my body. Brought my, brought my weight down from 240 to about 215 and in very good condition. So I won that show and kind of got bitten by the bug. I went out to California, uh, met Ed Connors of Gold's Gym, who I owe a lot of credit to. Um, also, lose a wish from American Muscle. He helped me out quite a bit on the beginning and introduced me to bodybuilding. <clears throat> and uh, you know, Ed put me up at his house and let me train out there and work around the pros a little bit. And I learned a lot and kind of just wanted to come back. And I decided to compete back in 1995. So in 1993, I won the team nationals. In 1995, I came back at 22 and won the tournament of champions out in California. Just knowing that. 
I would get the publicity that I needed, and, and uh, of course, by that time, I had put on drastically much more size, uh, competed at 241 there, uh, won the show, basically piece of cake, uh, and then everything basically started to happen. I mean, I was uh, offered a WIDA contract. I wasn't even a professional yet, um, and shot with all the magazines, got my first Muscle and Fitness cover, uh, was on the mu cover of Muscle Mag, uh, you know, and, and uh, my career took off. So in the ne next year, I decided <clears throat> to do the Nationals. I wanted to wait a year, so in 96, I won the Nationals as a heavyweight, earned my professional status. And of course, uh, signed a weeder contract uh, in 96, and, and uh, I was under contract with them, uh, you know, straight through, so. Uh, you know, Joe's backed me up quite a bit in bodybuilding and... to like uh, 60.
Four weeks. I'm so tired of saying four weeks. Every day is four weeks. Four. Everyone says, oh, when's the show? Week away. So, yeah, I only dream for that. Of course, I uh, signed a Weeder contract uh, in '96, and and uh, I was under contract with them, uh, you know, straight through. So, uh, you know, Joe's backed me up quite a bit in bodybuilding, and <clears throat> um, I just basically uh, took 1997 off after winning my pro card, just to give my body a little time to, to build up, and, and so I could move up in the pro ranks and. Um, 1998, I came back, Knight of Champions, came in a little off condition. I missed my peak and came in 11th at that show. And, and actually, uh, Ronnie Coleman won that. Kevin Leveroni got second. So that was the start of basically Ronnie's uh, uh, reign to the top. He, I think he won uh, the Olympia the first time that year. So uh, 1998, you know, just it was hard to, for me to take because I always had won. So it was kind of a step back for me. I had to sit back and... and uh, revised my whole routine and uh, what I did is I just decided to come in at my absolute best conditioning for 1999 so I came back at the Pro Ironman Arnold Classic where I got third and fourth and in my all-time best condition uh, stripped down to about 240 245 pounds uh, and and I looked my absolute best I've ever looked so I actually competed lighter than when I turned professional in 96 and then I went to Olympia at the end of 99 and ended up placing 15th, which was kind of a setback for me because I thought I was in pretty good shape. But uh, I just didn't get the calls. You know, it was a good lineup and, uh, you know, it was understandable. So I had a lot of things in the, in the works anyway. When I did the Olympia, I was moving out right after the show out to California to further my opportunities, which has been the best thing I've ever done because it's pulled me away from anything that, that, uh, that, kept me from doing uh, bodybuilding back home, you know, uh, uh, bumping into my schedule with my training and, and dieting. So uh, Southern California move has been uh, the highlight of basically my career, I think, uh, much more than winning contests and whatnot. But I decided, you know, I do, <clears throat> I had to requalify for the Mr. Olympia 2000, so I did the Night of Champions in, in May and came in first there. Um, it was a big win for me, uh, really didn't change anything, but I came in, you know, at my absolute best, of course, uh, that I had looked for that show. And um, I did what I needed to do, basically. It was all business for me. Uh, no one really knew I was doing the contest, but um, I don't really say too much when I do shows. I don't predict anything. And, uh, you know, everyone thought for sure that that would, you know, put me in a, a really good position at the Olympia, which I just did. Placed eighth there. Um, I, I was happy with eighth because my goal was top ten. Just like next year, I can say it right now, my goal will be to, to place at least the same. Um, of course, I'd like to move up a little bit, but I don't expect it to go there and win. Um, for next year, basically, I'm just going to uh, focus on the Olympia and just try to uh, improve on conditioning and detail rather than getting much bigger because I don't really think I need to. 
Um, I went over to Europe and I dropped like 13 pounds a week after the Mr. Olympia in Vegas and placed second there to Ronnie Coleman in two contests. So I know what I need to do. Um, I know what kind of condition I need to be in and uh, I will, I'll do that for 2001 for sure. And it will give me a whole year to prepare for the contest. So I can take a little break now. I have a lot of appearance scheduled. Uh, we were actually going on a cruise in a couple weeks. So I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, basically I'm gonna guest post through the spring, attend all the major contests and, uh, and focus more on business uh, opportunities um, and, and um, um, just make a decision what, what I'm gonna do next as far as uh, uh, maybe after bodybuilding. I'm not really sure as of right now what I wanna do. Uh, we've been discussing a few things that we'd like to do together even though she's uh, in her nursing we would still like to do something together and, and she's basically the only one that I can uh, I can really work with because we work together so well. I mean, we're best friends. She's my wife, but she, she's also my best friend and I can trust her. And uh, she has the same sense that I have with business where it's, uh, you know, every, every move we make is basically uh, revolves around, uh, you know, making money, uh, promoting myself and, and uh, giving something back in the business that we're in. So. It just depends, you know, I think she's going to miss her nursing if she ever pulled out of it, so I don't really want to pull her away from that. She has her life, I have mine, and, and she, you know, of course helps me as much as I help her and keep her focused. She keeps me focused, so uh, I think you need a partner as, as far as in anything, um, you know, to keep you motivated, and it always helps being around successful people, and I always, you know, look at her and, and re give, you know, get, re you know, I give her so much respect because she works so hard, you know, through school and everything. Just like she sees my training and dieting and, and when I do well at the contest, I mean, it's like her win also. So it's great for both of us and I'm just really happy. So um, basically that's my story. And uh, you know, it's, it's bodybuilding has been really, really great to me. I enjoy uh, going to the contest and, and having the uh, great fan following. I think I'm getting more and more popular now and I think that's important because, uh, you know, you gotta give something back to the sport also. It's not just about winning contests and always trying to improve because uh, my whole goal is always, I wanna look my absolute best for me. Rather, I don't really care what other people think is a certain look that I'm trying to achieve. It's not necessarily being the biggest, hugest ripped guy. It's, it's an all around look where you can still stay marketable and, and uh, you know, um, people actually look at your physique and they look at your look and they say, that's a great look, I'd like to look like that. You know, anyone can look at some of these guys and say, wow, they're freaky, but ask them if they want to look like that. They don't say no, you know, they say no. Or, uh, you know, these guys, uh, you know, a lot of guys aren't happy with the way they look. I think they should follow their own instincts and just and do what they, they feel is right for them. Because uh, when it's all over, you know, you look back and, and you, I, I can actually look back and say, well, you know, I achieved a lot and it was exactly what I wanted to achieve. So, uh, like I said, I'm happy. And uh, it seems like, you know, my fans are happy with, with the way I look at the contests. Uh, I know I probably could have been better at this year's Olympia. Um, but, you know, I, I peaked for the Night of Champions at my absolute best. So I think I peaked actually a little early for this, for this Olympia and tried to bring it down a little too far. And then, uh, you know, things turned a little bit haywire at the end. So, um, I'll be on the money next time. It'll give me a whole year to prepare, and I hope to see everyone, you know, through the other contests and uh, promote myself a little bit more. Uh, pursue some other interests. I mean, I'd love to get into acting or some sort of modeling. I mean, I, it's a dream of anyone's out here, but I'm not going to live the pipe dream like everyone else and and say, you know, I'm going to be an actor. I'm the next Arnold, and this and that. Uh, it's just, you know, you just take advantage of opportunities that come to you, and if you don't get off the couch and chase those opportunities, they may not come. So I'm, I'm working on a couple of things now and, and I'm sure this video will help and give readers, uh, you know, the people that, the viewers, you know, an idea of what Jay Cutler is all about, not only as a bodybuilder, but as a person. And, you know, I'm always trying to attain, attain certain goals. And, uh, you know, my goal when I started bodybuilding was basically, I said, uh, you know, I want to be financially secure. I want to buy my house. I want to buy my cars. I want to put a little money in the bank and I'll be happy. And you know what? 
I've already achieved those goals. So um, people say, well, what motivates you? Well, being in this position is, is uh, you know, is, I mean, I'm eighth in the world. It's an incredible feeling. Uh, what motivates me now is basically uh, more the fans uh, rather than uh, all the fame and everything in bodybuilding. I don't like, you know, uh, people coming up to me and saying, wow, you know, you're Jay. Uh, you know, and being nervous, and the, the, I'm just a normal guy, you know, it's, it's just a job for me, and I'm glad I can help people, and uh, not only attain goals in bodybuilding, but in life in general, so I, I think that's important, too, and, you know, that's it, you know, there's still more to Jay Cutler to come, so, um, you know, I plan to keep, you know, pushing uh, all my photos out, my, do my mail order, do my hats, t-shirts, um, produce some more videos, um, you know, many other different things. We'll see what comes about. I just need to keep my wheels spinning and, and think of uh, different things that I can do. Uh, I'm always thinking, and uh, we're always thinking together, trying to scheme something, put something together. So um, I think that's important because you know you, you get one, you fall one step behind in bodybuilding. It's it's like any professional sports. I mean, you you'll just get steamrolled. So I'm just going to try to stay on top and and. Uh, and keep improving and, and keep my face out there and and uh, make everyone happy, basically. All that. All that. Love to stretch.
now.
sodium tomorrow. All right. High, high, high carbs. Potatoes? No. No yeah. oatmeal? No Almost 272 with clothes. So what's that mean? Seems like I gotta drop some weight. It means you're a genetic wonder. I don't know if it's gonna come off.
a few days ago, whatever that was. <laughs> let's see, stamp, let's see uh, that three quarters tricep. Just hide Good. T take a take a step closer to the sink. Yeah. Let's see the light. Okay. There good. you go. Let's see uh, uh the abs and thighs. See, uh, stance one more time. A couple other things. And a uh, front lat spread. Good. Let's see a train one more time, too. Good. It's kind of. What did I see last? Like, four days ago? You know, it's up and down. Let me say crunch up. Okay. He'll look at you know, 270. He'll keep 262, and then last night it was 270, you know? Yeah. I was really full last night, though, right, Mitch? Oh, that looks good. Let's see if Christmas tree. This must have it on video so we can take a look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's tighter than, than whatever I saw you four days ago. I'm thinking a week ago. The lightest your weight has been as well. 262. Two, two two. What day is today? Thursday? Yeah. When do we come up here? Sunday or Saturday? Sunday. 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 So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Four days you're tired of. Where's your low day? So another piece of paper. Carry. Uh, this is assumption is you should be there. That's it. You're done. You should be less than 261. You might be 258. But I, that's it. Cool. Yeah, because I mean, I'm just uh, not hungry. Keep your sodium in. Maybe that's affecting your appetite. See, I mean, the thing is, just, you know, the high days, I don't really put it in. I'm trying to do what I did last time for the last show. And that's I barely used any salt on my high days, on my carb days, or on my low days, I jacked it up. Yeah, just jack, keep it high all the time. It's better to keep it high all the yeah, way through. I'm just worried about... No, if you... Weight rebounds you know. to 272. To say it's only water. You know? It'll, it'll make you look worse. You know, not as cut, but it'll make your muscles swell. So on your low days, you know, they won't deflate. Mm -hmm. You know, the more, more blown up they are on your full high days, the less they're going to... You know, when you diet tough, you're not going to shrink. Mm -hmm. That should be it. You're pretty close right now. Pretty close. You're harder than four days ago. That's why I said, was it, you know, confused as a week? Saying this is good progress for a week. That was a good week here in four days. Good progress for four days. Yeah. Uh, how many contests have you done? Four? Four or five. Four or five. Every contest, every contest yeah, is done. Since, which is only what? That one in the US. Five contests and you're in the Mr. Olympia. Five total contests or four? Five. Every contest, team nationals, tournament champions, tournament of champions, 
Nationals, United Champions, Arnold, Iron Man, Arnold, Olympia. Pretty, pretty quick, pretty quick progress for him, huh? Pretty much is at his best. You know, right there. You know, nothing crazy. Lose a couple pounds and um, you know, try to be as cut and as big as you can. You know, try to avoid making mistakes. That's all. Jay's on autopilot. Jay's on autopilot. He doesn't have to, he doesn't want to think about it. My last proud meal of the day. 40 grams so of carbs. So when, when are we going to get together again? If, uh, when we come back. I had oatmeal, meal, four or five, and no carbs, and I have no sodium at all. Trained a double. Yeah, I was lucky because I was given the genetics for bodybuilding, and people say that my structure was, was uh, always, you know, a pretty good start for bodybuilding. You know, I had the pretty wide shoulders, and, uh, you know, luckily my muscles have achieved a certain amount of maturity for such a young age, where I was really good at 23 when I turned professional. And uh, what I like to advise a lot of people up and coming in the sport and, and trying to attain professional status and... and uh, you know, higher rank, uh, amateur rankings. I, I just tell people, uh, you know, to start off basically slow, don't overdo it. You know, I overtrained in the beginning. I tried to push myself too hard. And, uh, you know, bodybuilding is only for so many. That's why there's only so many elite bodybuilders. Uh, I think it's more of a mental game than a physical game. So I always tell people, you know, you got, you got to be prepared for a lot of ups and downs. It's like any business where, uh, you know, you can win one show. I mean, let's put it this way. I went from, you know, last year, or, uh, then a 99 season, I, I placed third and fourth at the Arnold Classic, which is very respectable positions. And then I f finished 15th, which was second to last at the Mr. Olympia. And I looked dressed, I think I looked better at the Mr. Olympia than I did in the earlier shows. And a lot of the guys that I beat early in the year beat me at the Olympia, and I, I was baffled. But, you know, I understand that that's just the way it is. And I, I mentally can handle that, and I, didn't get mad, I didn't get upset. I just said to my wife, okay, I just come back in 2000 and I, I prove that to myself. I said that I had something to prove to myself. And that's always been uh, why I've achieved so much because I always have something to prove to myself where I always set realistic goals. And that's why I tell people you must set realistic goals. And certain goals are just unattainable for certain people. So. A realistic goal for me was, like I said, to buy a house, uh, my cars, and put money in the bank. And I did. I thought I'd get that by the end of bodybuilding, and here I am, just basically my f two, first two years on the, cir on the circuit really doing well, and I've already achieved those goals. I have many years left if I really want. And uh, sometimes, you know, that, then basically I can look back and say, maybe I didn't set my goals high enough, but you know what? Uh, most guys say, okay, I'm going to be Mr. Olympia. I still don't have that goal in my mind because I don't think that I'll ever be Mr. Olympia for some reason. I don't know why, but people ask me that and, and people say, well, you're going to be Mr. Olympia someday. And it, it's just, it's not my goal because I have other goals that are realistic. And that's, of course, for my family and uh, um, just to be successful in bodybuilding. I just want to be happy. And sometimes uh, winning the shows may not make you happy. I mean, I went to the United Champions thinking, no way can I win this contest. I mean, I remember I said it a hundred times and I went in there basically one call out and won the show. And I always, I actually said to my wife, I said, I don't want to win the show. And then when I won, I said, wow, it was great. I, I'm happy I won. So, uh, you know, you set realistic goals and, and a lot of the times you can achieve them. So in the beginning, I basically started with the goal. I didn't go to the team nationals thinking that I could win. I went there basically because I, I felt that I got in the best shape that I've ever been and I was happy with the way I looked and I won. I went to nationals. I didn't expect to win, of course. When I turned my, get my pro card, uh, you can ask her. I mean, Tom Prince was basically supposed to win that show and I ended up winning the show and getting my pro card and it was, a, it was great when I did. But I achieved a certain, uh, a, a certain look that I 
had shot for. I wanted to be better than the uh, tournament of champions the year before, which I was. I was up from 241 to 248. So you set those realistic goals. I mean, everyone wants to put on 20 pounds a year, but will that 20 pounds look a certain way? You can't go by weights. You can't go by weights in the gym. Uh, you can't say, well, I'm going to get up to 250 pounds. You don't know what 250 pounds is going to look on you. So you start off, you say, okay, what you, you evaluate your physique. You say, okay, what's available to me as far as gyms, food? I mean, food's 90% of it anyway. You must learn. I tell people all the time, the most important thing a beginner can do is read. That's, the, that's what's helped me so much is I buried myself in, in libraries, uh, read through all my wife's uh, nursing books, um, uh, all different sorts of nutrition books, whether it not, not even be involved in bodybuilding, bicycling, uh, runners, just learning about foods, you know, reading calorie books, uh, different kinds of foods, what foods work for you the best. I found out that I can't eat pasta. Um, I like to eat a lot of red meat off season rather than chicken and turkey because I, for some reason the red meat makes me a little fuller. So I've learned different things through your body, but you, you only learn by trial and error. So you must not be afraid to try certain things just because it works for someone else. It doesn't mean it will work for you. So basically just, you know, write everything down, follow that for basically, uh, you know, two, two, three weeks, you know, write down your training and your diet, and you make adjustments from there. You evaluate yourself after those two, three weeks, you know, have I improved or have I gotten worse? Have I gained body fat or lost body fat? Have I lost muscle or gained muscle? And whatever your goal may be, everyone has certain goals, whether it be put on muscle, get leaner, uh, improve a body part, uh, bring out detail in a certain area. I mean, there's many different ways to look at it, so you have to like set your goals uh, specifically for yourself. And, and basically that's why I tell people, you know, just map everything out, write it down, and learn different, you know, try different things as far as foods, try different uh, training routines, whether it be high reps, low reps, uh, drop sets, uh, sets to failure, uh, force repetitions, you gotta try it all. I've, tr I've been through every single workout since day one and basically I learned around 21, when I was 21 years old, that this kind of training style works for me and I haven't changed it since. Of course, I've changed the schedule around, which I think is important too. Try training, you know, a certain number of days in a row and then, uh, you know, change that routine throughout the year. But I found that now I don't need as much rest as I did when I was growing a lot more because I don't put on a, a lot of body weight off season. I may only go up about 20, uh, 25 pounds over my contest weight, uh, most of it being fluid retention. So uh, I don't tend to store a lot of body fat, which I'm fortunate I don't store body fat easily. So I can make uh, adjustments to my diet um, by increasing the food rather than backing off things at this point because my metabolism has gotten so fast. But that's helped, you know, with all competing so much and doing all the cardio. And some people just can't do cardio, some people can. So, like I said, just basically follow what works best for you and, and don't be afraid to try anything and always listen to suggestions from people, um, even non bodybuilders. I mean, there's a lot of knowledge out there, people read a lot. People have tried different things or heard different things. You know, sit down and listen to people because I think that's important.
workout number two today. Cardio this morning. Power cardio. I basically had a lot of people tell me I had a great physique from all the construction work. I mean, at the time, my diet was basically pizza, burgers, and whatever. You know, I was a kid, you know, that's what I ate. So I was ripped, but I had developed a great physique. I had good shoulders, very skinny legs, but I worked construction, and everyone would say, wow, you lift weights? And it's like, no, I just work construction. And I don't know, something about it just, I, I remember picking up books here and there in stores and being fascinated by it. and. And, uh, you know, Arnold, I guess, was an inspiration to me, like the Terminator movies. And I really just uh, really liked the look of, of the bodybuilder. And I had no idea what it was all about, but I knew that it was kind of almost like my destiny to be here. And it was always in my heart. And I think that's why I've done so well at it. And people are amazed at how disciplined I am um, because I mean, but that's how I am with anything. And when, when I get involved in something, I always give 100% because I say, you know, I'm here. This, if I'm going to the gym, I'm gonna drag myself to the gym, I'm in the gym. It's, it's really hard for me to go in there and just train like very easy because I say, I'm here, I'm gonna get the job done. And even on my days when I don't feel like training, of course, there's many of those days, I say, Jay, you know, I talk to myself and say, you got a job to do. You're paid to do this. People would die for your life, and that's all I think about is is the position I'm in. And, and uh, you know, I mean, this is this is the best life in the world. I love being a pro bodybuilder, and I'm very fortunate at 27 years old to be uh, as high as I the level that I've achieved. But you know what? I've worked really, really hard for this position, and uh, and not saying that anyone else has, but I, I realize I am fortunate and fortunate to, uh, to be making you know, a great living at it and staying healthy at the same time, which is very important for me and also for her. You know, that's, that's always been our goal is to do well, but we're, we're maintaining a healthy lifestyle, we're eating very healthy all the time. And you know, I know a lot of guys like to, to really enjoy their off season and eat a lot. I mean, I do too, don't get me wrong, I like to eat, but um, you know, it's, it's you know, almost been a week after the show and you know, I've had a few little things here and there, but I mean, I'm, my weight's, I'm still weight, I weigh 250 pounds today. Um, and I mean, I competed over in Europe around uh, 248, so I really haven't enjoyed myself and went out and binged out because I want to stay in shape for business reasons. I have guest posings and and I want to do some more photos and, uh, you know, you look at it at that kind of uh, aspect that you, you have to realize that this is a business also. It's not just, okay, show's over, I can do what I want, look the way I want. People look at you year round, you're always under the spotlight. And I, I realize that and I have to be presentable all the time and be professional all the time. And I think people understand that. So that's important for me. Oh. 
Two more seconds. Wow, 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 wow.